and welcome to McQuilling TV. I'm Allison Emilio, and joining us for the first time today is Oliver Guh, Marine Intelligence Analyst at McQuilling Services. Welcome, Oliver. It's so nice having you here. Thank you so much, Allison, and happy to be here today. Well, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about something that seems to be of interest to a lot of market participants, and that's teapot refineries. So can you tell us a little bit about what teapot refineries are and how they're impacting the global tanker markets? Absolutely. The teapot refineries are independent oil refiners in China, which previously can only buy crude from the state-owned oil companies. The bulk of them are located in Shandong province and very close to the Qingdao port. However, the game changed in the middle of 2015 when Chinese government granted crude oil import license to some of the teapot refineries. Due to the increased demand of these teapot refineries, China has been increasing their crude oil import to around average around 7.4 million barrels per day in the first five months of 2016. It is a 16% increase compared to the same period in 2015. In the beginning of March, 16 teapot refiners launched a, the China Petroleum Purchase Federation of Independent Refineries and are projected to process around up to 20% of the overall 2016 Chinese crude oil imports. However, due to the increased demand of all these refineries, a backlog of tanker traffic has been observed at the Qingdao port. Mm. In this past, past May, we observed around 23 tankers were either in port or at anchored within the tanker, with the tank, tanker port area, uh, compared to only six in January. However, this number slightly dropped to 21 in June, but still, it is at a very high level. Yeah, high number. So have you actually seen a correlation between increased port delays and tanker freight rates? Yes. Throughout the course of this year, we do witness a notable correlation between the average waiting days and the tanker freight rate, particularly for VLCC AG East route. By using the AIS position data, we noticed that the VLCC discharge days has more than doubled in two weeks in the end of February. As a result, the TD3 rate, which is AG China route, has jumped from worst go 50 to worst go 93 at the beginning of March. Soon after the delay east, rates correct themselves downwards to what's called 67 in the middle of March because of the tonnage list getting longer. As we expected that Chinese will reduce their crude oil imports slightly due to the increase in crude oil prices, we think that there will be more VLCCs released to the tonnage list and which will put a downward pressure on the tanker freight rate. You mentioned AIS earlier, which is also another hot industry topic. So can you tell us how McQuilling Services is utilizing vessel tracking data in its analysis? Yes. McQuilling Services has been tracking over 7,000 tankers, including oil, chemical, floating storage, and U.S. flag tugboats since the beginning of 2014. Combining this information with our commercial and logistic data, we are under the development of a client-based trade flow system. With the commercial data and also our in-house market intelligence, we distinguish ourselves to in delivering more accurate vessel position forecasts and also the cargo movement information. Let's take the port, the Qingdao port analysis as an example. So the vessel coordinates were captured automatically by the AIS system whenever we saw a draft drop in the port area. Mm -hmm. After that, we brought in the commercial information to eliminate all the, the ships that were actually doing offshore floating storage. Then the port analysis in here only capture uh, evaluating the ships that were trading actively in the spot market. Okay. By doing it, we were able to get a more accurate picture of the overall situation in Qingdao port. By using the AAS position, 
Macquillan Services will deliver accurate and enhanced market analysis on the trade flows, the market drivers, and the market trend. Well, thank you, Oliver. That was all very interesting, and uh, we are happy to have you here, and we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you very much, Allison. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of McQuilling TV. I'm Allison Omilio. Thanks for watching.